Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. With me today is Dr. Joy. She is a dentist and she specializes in older adults and she's got some excellent stories and we're going to talk about oral care in older adults and maybe the rest of us while we're at it. So thanks for joining me, Dr. Joy. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> so when we were, we're laughing because Joy's 48 hours early and we're discussing how all of us end up playing calendar roulette. So, <laughs> so that's true. A, yeah, that, let's. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it could be a typical day. You know, when I make house calls, you, you never know. I mean, there might be a situation where, you know, unfortunately, someone might have to go to the hospital or someone, you know, someone, someone who's suffering from dementia might just be having a bad day, you know? So, I mean, you know what happens? So, yeah, we, you know, it, calendar roulette can happen in one day, let alone one week. <laughs> yeah, this is my what I think of one, two. I don't know, it's like a fourth calendar change in 48 hours, but hey, that's okay. I was telling Dr. Joy, she made my husband really happy, and that's all that matters, right? <laughs> so why don't you start with your background and how you got into specializing in older adults and a dentist that does house calls? Like, I know, right? that's a thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, you can blame my grandmother. Um, or I can blame my grandmother. Uh, she needed a new lower partial denture and was suffering from sciatica. So all she could do was stay at home. And I mean, children, grandchildren, eager, willing to help. But, you know, suffice to say, she felt like a burden. I mean, she truly did. And, and she didn't want to uh, pull us away from our own schedules and our own busy lives, right? So it was my dental assistant who suggested that we make the denture and we do all the steps for the denture in the comfort of her own uh, living room. And we called it Easy Chair Dentistry. And it was fantastic because making a denture takes five steps, but it's all palliative. It's all impressions and try-ins, but there's nothing invasive about it. It doesn't matter if someone's on blood thinners. It doesn't matter um, if someone, you know, can enter a dental office or not. As long as we can take those impressions and do the steps, the denture can be made quite easily and, and adjusted quite easily in the comfort of their own room so, uh, or home. So that's what I did. And I inserted it on a Friday. And she went to church on Sunday. That's the one place she went was church. And I got a frantic home phone call from her daughter, my aunt, saying, oh, my God, Joy, I'm, I'm warning you right now. She's telling everyone you make house calls. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, this was like a one off. Like, I, like, you know, Merry Christmas, Graham, you know, happy birthday, happy grandparents day. Love you so much. Wouldn't you know it? I got a phone call the next day from a fellow parishioner of hers. And it was a uh, granddaughter. And her grandmother had suffered a stroke two years prior and was nonverbal. And they, she was a very formal woman and always wanted to have her hair done and her makeup. And so they were continuing to do this for her, which I thought was so lovely. And one of the things they were continuing to do was brush her teeth, except all of a sudden they no started noticing a smell. And so they're like, Doc, if you can come over. Well, I didn't know what to bring. I mean, this is literally the next day. So I brought what I thought was appropriate. And it totally was because I didn't need to clean anything because she didn't have any teeth. She had <laughs> dentures. And the, I have the daughter, the granddaughter and the rest of the family around this. And I've told this story so many times, but it's just it's just suffice to say, I mean, this is the acme of what I, I deal with on a regular basis. I have the entire family surrounding this bed because this is the matriarch of the family and they're beside themselves because they've been trying so hard to keep the quality of life as, as, um, as the way it used to be for her when she was, you know, before the stroke. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so I take a look at her and I lift up her upper lip and I see that it is her, it's a denture. And so they couldn't believe it. Take the dentures out. The smell was a little ripe. Um, I unfortunately had to prescribe an antifungal medication because she did Ooh. suffer from denture stomatitis. Uh, and the family was beside themselves, absolutely beside themselves. And after I showed them what to do and, you know, and they, we, you know, we able to um, come up with a really good game plan for her. 
uh, to make sure that her oral environment, the mouth was healthy and, and on a daily basis and what to do with the dentures and all that stuff. I started thinking about this. This was not neglect. This is a situation where we, people are just not being educated um, on or proper oral care. And, you know, the person was in a hospital, right? If, if they noticed at all that she was a dentalist and these were, I mean, the, granted, these were gorgeous dentures. They were beautiful. She paid primo dollar for these dentures. They were very realistic. I mean, that was what she wanted, obviously. But the hospital never said anything. And we can't expect the hospital to say things, right? So that's yes, number one. So, okay, fine. They didn't say anything. They're trying to get her stable. They want to get her home, right? That's, that's the hospital's job, right? But it was a home health care agency that I wasn't even in the business yet. And I had recognized the name. Never, they never looked at the person's mouth. Like, how is this, how is this even possible? So I, that's when I realized we don't, what well, we don't, we don't know what we don't know. We um, have to take it upon ourselves to be advocates for our loved ones and the residents in, in for those that work in, in nursing homes and assisted care facilities and skilled nursing facilities and rehab and memory care facilities. Uh, we have to take it upon ourselves because there is no education when it comes to oral care. And that's why it's so important that we know what's going on in our loved one's mouths ahead of time, while we can still communicate with them at early, you know, pre-early stage. Um, because, you know, when it gets to the point when they can no longer communicate with us, we don't know if there's, if there's a problem or not until potentially, you know, it can become an abscess or swelling or something that really can be, you know, um, well, you know, an, an abscess can lead to sepsis. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. It could, it could become serious. It could become a medical problem. A dental issue that can be completely reversible can become a medical problem. So there you go. also the short takeaway would be, don't be so vain that you don't tell people you have yeah. to tell your family that you have dental. You don't have to tell your friends. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, I mean, I can just imagine the, the gobsmack expression on their faces dentures <laughs> just like... they didn't believe me until oh, I, until i until i flipped them i took them out of their of the of her mouth oh, you know geez. they did not she's like no they no no no, no impossible that's impossible and i went click, click and i took them out and they were i mean beside themselves but also they they felt so bad they felt so bad that they, they felt that they had let their grandmother or their mother down you know she was a widow so the husband was no longer around to say no this is what she has so i mean in the on the, the daughter was a medical poa right so she's making all the medical decisions still had no idea what was going on in her mom's mouth and is yeah. there a way like i always took my mom to the dentist that was fun because they got my parents had you know one of those postcards remind you of your dental upcoming yeah. dental appointment it was back in march 2017 and i had to call the dentist's office and say well only mom will be coming because dad has passed away. <laughs> yeah. And then I had to tell them this past year, 2020, so almost a little more than a past year, that she that we wouldn't be t accepting the April appointment because she passed away March 31st. It's yeah. like, man, I'm always telling the dentist my family members yeah, are dying. Right. But is um, it, if you're, because I was also the medical PO, POA, so I, I knew what was going on with mom. She didn't have any dentures or any of that. She had crappy teeth, very chalky. So mm. you had to be kind of careful what she ate because, you know, those, you know, we're recording this before Halloween. Those sugar daddies and those sticky candies, man, those things popped her teeth out just so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cracked teeth. Yeah, she had, she had problems, but um, no dentures. But how, how would I, as the POA, have communicate like learned what she had and communicated that properly? Because that sounds like a great a great question that I, th I guess I didn't have to deal with. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fantastic. Find out who the dentist was, if possible. Have have a have a you know conversation, especially if um, they are the emergency contact. A lot of times, the emergency contact is a spouse, and a lot of times, too, the emergency contact is not updated. So it's crucial for HIPAA purposes that that the that you that the POA me I'm the medical POA as well, power of attorney. That, that I am made um, the emergency contact and that way communication can be had and we don't have to worry about HIPAA. We're not breaching any legalities there. So even if, you know, so at you know, an early stage, you know, someone might be offended, right? But in this particular situation, 
you will be abreast of, uh, made abreast of the situation of what's going on in the mouth, what the findings are, what the current routine treatment is, like, you know, are they going every three months? Are they going every four months, every six months? Um, that is a great conversation to have with their current dentist. And if they, you know, if, if someone has been moved, you know, so now they're closer to, you know, a loved one, it's, it's still relatively easy to, you know, to find out. That being said, something that you can do on your own accord is by having someone there with you to, you know, take a look in the mouth, you know, lift up that upper lip, lower the lower lip, take a look and see what's going on. Um, if, you know, if it's, you know, getting to the point where it's, it's, you know, where they no longer can really say, ah, I don't really know. And it's really important to be looking for things like a clasp to a partial denture that they might not have taken out in a while because it just feels so comfortable and it's a part of them, but not really a part of them, you know? So, yeah. So, yeah. So the situation like that, you know, to, to you know, take a look around um, and and have that have that conversation with them, because it's really important to make sure that they continue with good care, regardless if they're early, mid stage, you know, end stage hospice, no matter what's going on, um, you could continue good uh, quality care. Yeah. So would you uh, advocate for a little bit of medical detectiveness, like maybe go in the bathroom and see if there's container for dentures. There I don't have go. dentures either. So, okay. I'm like, not really sure what I'd be looking for, but I, I think I would know. So, I mean, I had braces and a, and a retainer when I was a kid. So I, I kind of have an idea what I'd be looking for, but Absolutely. yeah, if you're, if you're the healthcare power of attorney, then you definitely need to make sure that you're in contact with their dentist. So that's a, it, that was just a natural thing for me, but maybe that's not, you know, maybe we just gave somebody the, oh, duh, I need to take care of one more thing moment, which. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for, for adding to the list. Yeah, I apologize but, right now. <laughs> but still now, aren't you glad you know, because now you don't have to have that situation that Joy told us about in the beginning, because right? yuck. <laughs> seriously, glad seriously. Glad yeah. we're not recording this before meals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. Looking in, looking in the bathroom is, is a brilliant idea. You know, take a look around. Are they using a manual or an electric toothbrush? An electric toothbrush is something that they're used to doing. You want to continue that until they, you know, potentially say no. But I've got some patients that, that are, they welcome it. Do you know what I mean? And, and you, you, you're surprised, let's just put it this way. You're surprised that they would, but it's something they've been used to for the past 20 years. And so they, you know, they are, they have that memory, that feeling of having, you know, an electric toothbrush in the mouth. Also looking to see what kind of toothpaste they use, what kind of mouthwash they like, you know, that's really important too. You want to continue to buy the same product. That's what they're used to. That's what they like. That's what they've chosen to have when they brush their teeth and clean their mouths, continue to get it for them. That's what they like. Um, also too. Yeah. You want to be looking for those cases. You know, it could be, you know, it could be a little case like this. It could be, you know, really small, like a retainer case, really thin. It, it depends. You can be looking, you know, in the, the drawers or, you know, the medicine cabinet, whatever, to be looking for a case like that. That is a really good sign that there is, that's something there. Um, and don't be surprised if you shake it and there's something in there. It might be also something that they just stopped wearing that they've chosen not to wear anymore. And you know what? I'm a firm believer in less is more. If they are eating okay, if they are, you know, happy as a clam and you had no idea they had, let's say a lower partial denture. It's not a big deal if they don't want to wear it anymore. I, I promise you no dentist is going to be like, you have to wear it. No, if, if they no longer want to wear it, that's fine with me. Yeah. One last thing be. to fight let about. Seriously, yeah. seriously, let it be, let it go. Yeah. Well, you don't want to be fighting with somebody with their mouth because you're probably going to get bitten. You've probably experienced that. You know, actually, there are ways not to. And that's one of the things I do educate the staff with um, in different facilities is how not to, because it's really simple on how not to get bit. And there is there's really easy ways that, you know, for depending on the situation of, you know, so to show that, you know, even if the person is clenching and if all we can do is brush the front of their teeth, that's still a win. You know what I mean? We're brushing 50 percent of these teeth. Do you know what I mean? Are we, are we mm-hmm. going to try to force this mouth open? Absolutely not. But if they're clenching and they're like this, guess what? there's a lot of teeth here I can brush. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let's get in there. Also, too, we want to be checking for hoarding. You know, you know, we want to make sure they're not holding any food on either side of their mouth. That's also something that we can be looking for when we're going side to side. 
and my hand is over here and their teeth are over there and I'm, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get hurt. But yeah, there were some really easy ways of, of um, the really easy techniques to, to be able to clean the, clean the teeth, clean the mouth and, and not get bit. But that's the number one fear that the most, most CNAs have and caregivers have for sure. Well, it's not an unreasonable fear. No, absolutely not. Absolutely. The one, the one thing that I've seen like demonstrated is to like brush teeth together so that you're doing your teeth and they can kind of mimic you. Yes. That, that's probably better for early and mid, maybe not early stages, but mid stages for sure. And you so know, you, it's really good with that too. If I may interrupt, what's really good mm -hmm. with that too is now you can also be watching them to see how well they brush. Can they find the toothbrush? Are they putting the toothpaste on the toothbrush? How much toothpaste are they putting on the toothbrush? Are they bringing it to their mouths or are they just running it underwater? Um, you know, I mean, it happens, you know, okay. So now they brought it to the mouths. Are they really brushing, you know, maybe they're only really brushing the right side. They never really make it to the left side. Now they're done. Right. So, but you can see what their technique is like, and then you can do a little tell show do. What do I mean by that? You know, I think that you didn't brush your, the left side of your mouth. You know, let me, let me show you how to brush the left side of your mouth. I'm going to brush the upper left for you right now. And it could be hand over hand while you're doing it with them. And you could be behind them um, mm -hmm. to do it. If, you know, if they're in a wheelchair, you can be behind them and doing it. And, you know, and you touch the outside and you show them what you're going to be doing. And then you do it. And then you touch the lower left and say, hey, and I'm going to brush the lower left. Once again, hands out here, right? Can't, can't be hurting you. Brush downstairs over here. And you're tapping the outside so you can let them know where you're going to be going next. That is a really good way of, of helping them, making sure that they're brushing all their teeth, not just mo in modeling or not just following what you're doing, but also to make sure that they're, they're doing everything they should be doing in order to make sure all teeth are brushed, all areas are covered for sure. And if you're standing behind and to the side of them, especially in later stage Alzheimer's or dementias, their monocular vision sort of takes over and they don't really see you. So if your hand is underneath their hand guiding theirs, they might think they're doing it. Yes. 100%. So that's one, yes. That's one thing I learned a few years ago from Tipa Snow and the hand under hand technique is really the most beneficial thing I think people could learn Mm -hmm. because you know and i think it would be help helpful with like toddlers too because they're they're at the same um like developmental stage the kids are getting better uh, unfortunately our loved ones are getting worse and at For some sure. point their developmental age is about the same and mm -hmm. so those i think those you know it, it at the very least you might as well try it with toddlers right and and i will say too um for caregivers out there and they're, and they're just trying this out. Another thing that I've learned over the years, uh, is, is by being at eye level with them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once again, if someone's in a wheelchair, I'm kneeling down next to them so that we, cause we're equals, we are still equals. And I want to be at eye level with them. And, and also once again, you know, if I'm doing with the hand over hand, either mine over theirs or theirs over mine, or if I'm doing it for them, we are at the same level and I have found that to be so helpful and, and, and it get, I get amazing results that way because then I'm able to, um, uh, I feel like I'm engaged with them. You know, we, we have accomplished something and it might be, have to do it again the next day and again the next day, but you know, you, you get to the, you know, you know, you are achieving something that has not been achieved in the past. So that is huge. And you're doing it in a positive way. Yes. And after a few attempts or not necessarily yeah. attempts, but after a few days, yeah. you, you will, they will remember that, that you're an okay person. Yeah. And that's I what always, I tell the caregivers too. Yep. I, I have a perfect example of that. Like my mom was in late stage Alzheimer's. My listeners know that we'd go to the park or wherever we'd go. We'd go stalk kids and we'd go watch children, which makes us sound creepy, but we weren't creepy. And this one particular day, it happened to be my wedding anniversary and we'd come home from Colorado. Anybody that's flown through Denver should know that pff, you're never going to get where you think you're going to get when you, when they say you will, because Denver likes to screw that up. So kind of like that calendar roulette we were talking about. So I got home later than normal 
And I knew I was a little tired and I know I'd known from experience that if I had to fuss with her to get her in and out of the car and from point A to point B, I, it would, it would be hard to keep my energy level up. So I preemptively decided we were just going to, I was going to bring her a nice snack and I brought my wedding album that she had a lot of involvement in putting together. And when I showed up, she goes, oh, hi, where are we going today? And I was like, oh, it friggin figures. And I'm like, seriously, <laughs> you, you don't even remember that I'm your daughter. You think I'm your best friend, but you remember we go out all the time. It was just like, I was like, really? I mean, I felt good that she thought of me in like such a positive way. I'm like, wow, she knows we go out all the time. But crap, why did you have to remember that today? Because they were not leaving. <laughs> But that was, you know, that's how I made her feel was like mm. I was the fun friend that came and took her places to watch kids. And so if after so that was September of 2019. So after, you know, two and a half years took a little while, you know, and they weren't always positive experiences. So it won't take two and it. a half years for them to understand something that you do daily. But yeah, if they if you if you make sure to keep it positive, then. They'll be, it'll be easier to do and so much. yeah so so getting my mom to and from the dentist wasn't too bad she was actually pretty cooperative it, it, the car ride was always a pain in the butt because she always wanted to know why her husband was not taking her and one day it was so funny <laughs> she's she's grumbling all the way from the care home to the dentist office and she blah 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 complain 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 her husband was just a lazy sob yada yada and I'm like ugh. No, he's not. He's gone. But I didn't remind her of that. And she looked at me and she goes, now he's paying you to do this. Right? And I was just like, <laughs> really? I wish. But no, I didn't. I, I, I forgot what I told her, but it was just so funny. And she was good with the dentist, which I've also learned is, you know, we've been taught to respect the, you know, um, people of authority, which helped. But do you have suggestions for people whose family members might be a little less cooperative with the dentist? She was really good. I was quite surprised. You know, you, baby steps. I mean, quite honestly. So, you know, there are times where I am like, they'll be in their comfy chair. And so I want to be in a chair that will face them. And so that we're eye to eye before I really say anything. And I try to have a, you know, especially if they're still verbal and communicating, I want to have a conversation with them. Actually, I've got a really good story. So I um, am trying to find a resident in uh, a, a memory care facility. She is getting her hair done. I get there when they are, when she's walking out with her, with her walker. And fortunately we were about the same, same height. So we're, you know, we're chatting and the caregiver behind me is like, not today, like mouthing the words, like not today. <laughs> she's not in a good place. Not today. And I, I know I see what she's saying. And I kind of do like a one of, you know, like a thumbs up. Okay. But I have to go down to her floor anyway, right? I have to see somebody else. Might as well take a ride with her. So we're having a conversation and she asked me who I am, even though I just saw her three months ago. I'm like, you know, who, and I said, I'm, you know, I'm Dr. Joy, the dentist. I'm like, do you like Dennis? And she's like, yeah. She's like, I do like Dennis. They're good people. And I'm like, well, thank you. She's like, so you're a dentist, huh? And she looks at my name and I have, I'm wearing the exact same shirt, Dr. Joy, right? She's like, oh, that's a weird name for a dentist, Dr. Joy. <laughs> but suffice to say, we have this fantastic conversation. And then I'm like, you know, I've got time today because now we're like nearing her floor. Would you like a cleaning today? Oh, she, would you do that for me? Absolutely. I think I can arrange my schedule. The caregiver's eyes, like just boing, <laughs> like couldn't believe it. So, yeah, we got into her room. She sits right down, opens wide, and I do probably one of the best cleanings we've ever had together. And it's all of that engagement and communication ahead of time. I made her feel good. We had a really sweet conversation and she felt very comfortable with me. And I, and I like the fact that I was doing her cleaning in her room. This is her space. This is where she feels she has the most control. And, and I really try very hard to do my cleanings and, and exams and, and denture impressions and all that stuff in their rooms because this, that's their domain. And if they're allowing me into their space, we can have a conversation and, and we can, you know, have as much fun or not fun as we want. But, but I feel that it's, it's um, a better environment that 
they feel like they're opening the door to me. They are hosting me and uh, usually have a really good um, response from that. But yeah, I'll never forget that as long as I live. You're a dentist? <laughs> Dr. Jo- really? Dr. Joy? Like, it was hilarious. We had a great time. It was fantastic. <laughs> and that does go back to, you know, how you make them feel. Seriously. And she's... She obviously didn't think that Joy was the appropriate last name for a dentist. Yeah, absolutely not. Well, it's my first name, but yeah, who's right? But, but, you know, so, you know, having that conversation with them saying, you know, you know, there is, there is a tooth that I'm here that that needs to be seen. And I always show them my hands as gloved, obviously, and I'm masked, but I'm like, you know, I'm just want to take a look at that one tooth. Look, it's just my hands. And so then I will, you know, bring my finger across their lips that usually drops the jaws is totally subconscious that that will happen. And then I'm looking and I'm like, okay, I, it's your lower left tooth or your know, lower left tooth. So then I, you know, once again, pointing to the outside, I'm looking at that lower left tooth. Can you open wide for me? Um, and then I, so I try to focus on that while I'm scurrying my eyes everywhere else to see if there's anything else I should be aware of. <laughs> A lot of times I'll ask them to stick their tongue out at me. They love that. You know, because, but then, and but I, that's also part of an oral cancer screening that I'm doing that can happen at any age. And so I'm able to take a look at the tongue and I can tell a lot from the tongue. I can see if it's white or chalky that they're pretty much dehydrated and there's something wrong with their saliva, either quality or quantity of saliva. So, yeah. So, I mean, there's, you know, but they got to stick their tongue out at Dr. Joy. How fun is that? And they're usually laughing and now their mouth is open and I can see more baby steps. You know, you do the best you can with what you have. And, and, and then, you know, if I'm able to get an instrument in, great. And if not, and if it's just my hands feeling for any kind of swelling or abscesses, so that, you know, so be it. And that's the experience I had last Friday where I was able to treat the husband. But the wife, you know, she was just not, not open to it. So there you go. And I let the daughter know today was not the day. You know, when I'm back around next month, we'll try again. That really yeah. helps because it's, it's, that's just, that's the biggest challenge is, you know, rearranging everybody's schedule because mom's not in the mood today. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But you, you know, you have to be patient and you have to be flexible, you know? I mean, seriously, it's, I mean, it, there, I don't have the best days either sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Like that can happen to anyone. Um, and so for her, he was, he's always, he's always very amenable, but, but she, you know, she has her days and then she does, she has her days and, and that's okay. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm prepared for that. I'm aware. And a lot of times, you know, I'll try to talk, especially if it's a new resident for me, I will have had that conversation with either the loved one, you know, a daughter, son, you know, whoever the, the, uh, the PR power of attorney is either medical, financial or both. And then once I'm actually in the facility, if it's in a facility, then I'll have a conversation with either the floor nurse, the charge nurse, the, the CNA, the, you know, whoever else is there that's taking care of whoever's taking care of her that day. Um, and so that we can have a little conversation ahead of time. So I know what to go with, what, what, what to ask and what not to ask, you know, like, you know, what kind of conversation should I be having? And someone's like, don't ask about the husband. I'm like, not a problem, <laughs> not a problem, but talk about the dog Skippy. Absolutely. Let's talk about the dog Skippy. Let's spend some time on that. I love it when the TV is on and I really love it when it's like, you know, um, TCM or TV land. Uh, you know, uh, one time it was Little House in the Prairie and oh, I have, as you can tell, really long hair. No, it works out really well. She's like, you've got hair like Laura Ingalls. So I took it out of my ponytail and she's like, you really do it. I mean, you know, whatever it takes. <laughs> that is true. I just laugh because Little House on the Prairie. OK, that was on when I was like in third and fourth grade. And my great grandmother, my paternal great grandmother, Traveled across the country. She was the oldest of 14 children, God forbid. And you know, she was the oldest of 14. And they traveled across the country in a covered wagon. And when the kids got to scrapping, they all got kicked out of the wagon. Dad would, you know, crack the reins on the horses, move the wagon out of sight. And then the kids would have to trudge up to the wagon. And they oh. lived in a dugout. So this is all Little House on the Prairie stuff. For sure. And... Because I was like nine and Little House on the Prairie was like peak, at, you know, show at that time. You know, she's telling me these stories about her life. And I'm like, this is not as interesting as Little House on the Prairie because <laughs> I was <laughs> I was a stupid kid. And, you know, so when you said Little House on the Prairie, that, that was the memory that came to mind. And, you know, she she lived to 78. 
But she, they put a pacemaker in and she could feel it. She just had a like irregular heartbeat. And she mm. could feel it. And she was like, I don't like this. Poof. Just kind of gave up the ghost, which is really kind of a, it's, it's a little weird. Nobody else has been able to give up the ghost. You know, her daughter lived to 103. And then my, my goodness. Yeah. My, it was, she died. Uh, one about a week and a half after her 103rd birthday. But you know what? Nobody else in my family's gotten that old, so we're we're taking it. Yeah, there you but, go. I love it. I love it. So I was doing an Instagram live earlier today, and somebody asked me a question that I was not qualified to answer, but I gave what little tiny nugget of info that I know, and is what is the correlation between oral health and brain health? So oh my I gosh, promised them I'd ask you. And yeah, yeah no, obviously you have you have the answer. <laughs> no, it's such a great question. So. What has begun to be realized, and there's been really good research and, and research that's been defended, is that the quality of the mouth equals the quality of our memory. And what I mean by that is the bacteria that causes gingivitis. Well, first of all, let's start right there. Let's talk about chronic inflammation, right? We people that have more inflammation in their systems or eat more of an inflammatory diet has been shown to trigger an earlier onset of, of Alzheimer's uh, and or vascular dementia. So we, we know that already. So what is the most common chronic inflammatory state that our, our bodies could be in? Um, it's called gum disease, gingivitis, itis, inflammation of the gingiva, aka gums. We all have it, right? I mean, the, I, mean I think it's like almost like 76% of, of, of humans has this problem, right? Me included. I have to go to the dentist every three months. Um, oh, me, so, I have to go three times a year for cleanings as well. Yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, that's the way it is for my mouth as hard as I try. So anyway, the piriformis gingivalis, the, the, the actual, or pseudomonas, excuse me, pseudoformis gingivalis, the bacteria that causes, a main one that causes gum disease, the one that causes plaque. Well, that term we can find in several areas of our body, right? Our mouths, right? Our arteries, a little slightly different because you add a little cholesterol into that mix, right? But also, unfortunately, our brains, right? For those that are suffering from dementia, there's plaque deposits that form in the brain. Different mix, right? You've got some proteins in there that, that will form in there as well. But what they've discovered is that for people that are suffering from chronic conditions where they have a weakened blood brain barrier. The bacteria, I call it due to lack of overcrowding, they'll travel north and then they help trigger the formation of plaque. They, it doesn't cause dementia, but if the dementia has already kind of almost begun, then it will help trigger the production of plaque deposits in the brain. The healthier the mouth, the healthier the brain. I would also like to do as an aside that um, I think it's about 82% of bacteria and bacterial pneumonia is oral bacteria. Once again, mm. overcrowding, the bacteria that we have in our mouths, if we're not taking care of it, if we're not getting ahead of bacterial growth in our mouth by brushing twice a day, which is ultimately what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to get rid of the, the crap that we haven't swallowed from eating, right? That is just sitting there. But we're also trying to get rid of the bacteria that are eating that food, right? That's their food too, right? So we're trying to get rid of the bacteria that live off of that crap. And, and if we're not doing that, then we can aspirate or breathe in that bacteria, especially if the bacterial load is really high, if it's a really high level or really high content, and it can get into our lungs, especially if we're in bed, if we're not moving around, if we're more sedentary, that can happen. So, you know, that, so lungs are also an issue as well. So good oral health, good lung health, good oral health, good brain health. For sure. That is fascinating. I did not know most of that. The only thing I knew was the gum disease, the inflammation is bad. Bad. And it, yeah, that was about as, that was about as all I could tell this person. Well, and, but, you know, this is something to think about too, especially in this day and age right now. Do you really want your immune system? I, I, or at least for me, I don't want my immune system having to fight off the opportunistic bacteria in my mouth. Right. I want my immune system fighting for my vital organs, <laughs> namely yeah. my heart, lungs, and brain. You know what I mean? Because, and, and, and the mouth is very low priority for the immune system. Why? Because we have direct access to it. 
we can clean it ourselves. We can't do that necessarily with our lungs, but we can do that with our mouths. So the immune system doesn't spend as much time, doesn't pay as much attention you know, to our mouths as it does to other organs that keep us alive, right? So it's on us. It really, the onus is on us to make sure that our mouths and our loved ones' mouths are taken care of so that they can eat, so they can thrive, so they're not in any pain, that we can prevent issues, like I said before, that are potentially, you know, that are reversible. You know. And is it a bigger problem in older adults who don't drink a lot of water? Because, you know, like the like I got my water bottle right here so that I'm not, you know, getting all <coughs> dry throat. But yeah, she's got hers Me too. Me too, hers right here, off. right here. Is it purple or blue? Purple. It's purple. Oh, okay. You can't really tell, but I promise you it is purple. Yeah. Well, it looks periwinkle on the Zoom. <laughs> I so. know, it did. It actually Which matches is- my shirt, but, you know, lighting. <laughs> yes, I know. My my lighting, because it's getting later and the clouds came in, my lighting's getting a little, should have opened the other blinds, but that's okay. Technical <laughs> issues. That's all we're dealing with today. I know, right? But, Seriously. Like, I know my, excuse me, now I got the hiccups. My mom had to do um, an ultrasound for, they were looking for something. They did, I don't think they knew what they were looking for, but, you know, they tell you, oh, she's got to drink at least 32 ounces of water. And it was like, really? Like, I don't think the woman ever drank 32 ounces of water a day. You know, I might be able to get 32 ounces of Diet Coke in her, but we're, we're, we're trying or to skip coffee. that. My dad would be coffee. Yeah, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. No, my, my mom would have like six ounces of juice in the morning, and then she would just start off with the Diet Coke. She literally drank two liters of Diet Coke a day. So, and wow. caffeine free. And so, and Diet Coke. So we're talking all crapola. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, yeah, not, and this is the, yeah, this is the deal. Like you know, for especially with people that are chronic, you know, chronic conditions that they're on chronic medications, the number one cause or their number one side effect of all of them, number one is dry mouth. For whatever reason, it sucks the salivary glands dry. I, I, you know, and I and I probably learned the reason why back in dental school. I don't remember, <laughs> but the bottom line is there's two different kinds of dry mouth that we need to focus on, and one is quality of saliva and quantity of saliva. And the quality of saliva, we don't really uh, pay much attention to because we feel like we still have saliva in our mouths or we see saliva in their mouth. They're like, ah, they're fine. But, you know, it's and only when we're really, really suffering from dehydration is when the mouths begin to feel parched. Our dehydration levels actually start way before that because we're not consuming enough water to produce the saliva that we need. And why is saliva so important? Well, to speak, first of all, We need that lubrication in order for the tongues to hit and not get stuck to literally to the back of our teeth to say our T's, S's, and D's. I mean, it is what it is, right? And then, yeah. And then number two, we need the saliva to be able to break down our foods, right? And then be Mm -hmm. able to swallow them. And what happens with quality of saliva is that over time, we we begin to feel the saliva like in the back of our throat. It gets sticky, you know. it gets sticky, gets thicker, and and we think it's phlegm, right? So we're trying to cough it up. Well, people do have, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, running nose or or um, what do you call it? When the sinus is drain. Yeah, and allergies, you know, anything that, you know, you get it back of your throat, right? But a lot of times, especially for older adults, their saliva quality is just not what it used to be. And so it begins to set in the mouth and it gets kind of thicker, more viscous, more ropey, uh, cloudy. And, and it's not doing its job, or at least it's not doing its job as well, which is to allow us to be able to swallow, allow us to be able to break down our foods. And what can happen over time is that people begin to feel like they're choking. So, so there's quality of saliva and there's quantity of saliva. And like I said, the quantity of saliva, obviously we want to be drinking water. It's, it's nearly impossible. I, I tell it to my, you know, to the patients and the loved ones and all the time. And I, all I get is eye rolls. I totally get it. I mean, with my own family, you know, my dad's drinking his coffee, you know, and my mom's drinking her diet, right? No joke. So, or, or tea, diet tea, um, that is in the the one liter bottles, you know, Mm -hmm. that, I mean, the, no water consumption. Um, and cause like you said, it really wasn't a thing when they were growing up to drink water, water consumption was not a big deal. So to try to create a habit, at 78 or 82. So we do the best that, you know, we do the best that we can. And one of the things that can be done is by using an over the care, over the counter product called biotin. So biotin is a wonderful, um, it's got 
everything. It's got the toothpaste, it's got the mouthwash, and it's got the gel to help um, with lips. I use it on my lips in like the dental winter here in Chicago. And it's also good to put in food to help break down um, the food stuff to make it easier to swallow, to lubricate the food, to make it easier to swallow. But the great thing about all the products is that they can be swallowed. And on the bottle, it's going to say, this is not meant for consumption. Correct. We're not going to pour a glass of biotin and start chugging it like we would the Diet Coke, right? But what we can do with it is that we can do a, we can do a shot of it or like, you know, what, what three, five ounces moisturizes the mouth, get, hits the back of our throats. We do it five to, you know, five minutes, five to eight minutes before we eat something makes swallowing a lot. And uh, it really does help. It's got an additive effect. So the more often we do this, the more consistent we do this, the better it works and a uh, better overall effect. So for people that like to eat a certain kind of food, but all of a sudden it's beginning to bother them, um, this may help. Which would definitely be a better first first solution to try before like food thickeners and all that crazy stuff. I it it get I was lucky because my mom broke her leg and that's what mm. caused the end of life. Mm. So we didn't she was starting to forget how to eat and I was like, uh wasn't sure how I wanted that to be handled. Cause obviously that's a really difficult situation. For sure. And I didn't have to figure out how I wanted it handled. So she, f she fixed that for me. But is biotin available over the counter? Or do you need to get it from the dentist? Uh -uh, over the counter. Yeah. And it's and because it's pH neutral, it's not going to affect the tummy. Even people with IBS or celiac disease or other kind of, you know, tummy issues. Um, it's considered a topical. Uh, so once again, it doesn't interfere with any medications at all. Um, you can't OD on it. <laughs> There's nothing in there that could do that. Um, I have been asked that question before, so I thought I'd throw it out there. Um, it's yeah, a, it's really, a good question. I, mm, mm, um, you know, it, there's um, Walgreens has its own brand, but it does have fluoride in it, just so it's not meant to be swallowed. The only one really out there that I'm aware of, um, and please, audience, tell me something different. Let me know, you know, at the end or, you know, or, um, you know, later when I give out my information, please feel free to, you know, send me an email. Um, but as far as I know, biotin is the only one I know that is, can be consistently swallowed for the right, um, for the right purpose, uh, which is to lubricate the mouth. And I also recommend doing it, you know, having them do it if possible, do it before bedtime. Then you're not waking up with, you know, especially, and also people with sleep apnea, uh, you're not waking up hoarse. You're not waking up with a sore throat. You're not waking up with your tongue attached to the roof of your mouth. <laughs> I mean, honest to God, I mean, I've been, you know, told that and it's what an awful feeling, what an awful sensation. I mean, some that, you know, I can't even imagine. So yeah, doing a swig of it before they go to bed at night. Once again, you consistently do that and your mouth will ad adapt and it's, it's wonderful to be able to maintain that saliva through the night. So when you wake up in the morning, you're not as dry. And then, oh, look, it's right there for you at your bedside table. You could do another swig of it when you first wake up. No harm, no foul. You don't have to pee 20 minutes later. I mean, you know, it's great. <laughs> that's, that's a benefit. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm an aisle seat in the airplane. Uh, not that I've done one of those in forever. Yeah, no But joke. years ago, I had this gal. My husband likes the window seat. I do the aisle. So that means the middle seat's always open or we like it if it's open. This one gal desperately tried to convince me to move. And I just looked at her and I said, I can't. I have TB. And she looked at me in horror and pretty much ran away. And I'm like, tiny bladder. <laughs> so... <laughs> I have not heard that term before. I love it. That's fabulous. <laughs> and it's true because we went um, recently. We took our trailer out on an inaugural trip. It's where I recorded my 200th episode. I think you're 201. Either Woo! that or 202. And we let I, I peed, got in the car, and we drove thank God the dog started whining because I was like, there's no way. Like, how can you go to the bathroom four times before you leave the house? 20 minutes down the road, you got to go again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm all for things that don't cause you to have to go to the bathroom 500 times a day. <laughs> Once again, I whatever to I can that. do to help. <laughs> Appreciate it. You know, and I've had um, I haven't had my tongue stuck to the roof of my mouth, but I've woke up in the morning. And it's like you just feel like, did I breathe sand all night? Because like, right. why? 
you people know, and- that breathe through their mouths at night, open mouth breathing, you know, at night. I mean, that is, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's a condition and, you know, what can we do to help, you know, help the mouth when we, when we go through that, especially if we've had a cold, our nose is stuffed up or once again, allergies, whatever this can, this can really help with the mouth. Sounds terrific. Are there any last bits of um, advice we should sh- or you should share with the listeners before I let you run off and help more older adults? <laughs> oh, the, um, let's see. The uh, mm, I really feel that when it comes to oral care, it doesn't matter if one is in hospice, if one has only dentures. Um, it, you know, it, it runs the gamut. Even if someone has completely without teeth and they have dentures, we still need to go through the ritual of having them, you know, take the dentures out at night, make sure they're clean, make sure the mouth is clean. You know, it's not just taking the dentures out, ignoring what, what they've been sitting in all day. And now, and, and you spend a lot of time, you know, with the dentures. We want to spend a lot of time with the dentures. We want to make sure they're clean. We want to make sure the mouth is clean too. And so, you know, maybe it needs a swab. Right. So we use we use, you know, um, a, a mouthwash like biotin, for example, we can dip that in there. We don't want to use a dry swab. We want to make sure that the mouth has been has been wiped out, too. And even if someone is, um, you know, potentially uh, combative, shall we say, you know, if they're without teeth, you're not going to get bit. You obviously want to do the best that you can. You think they can only close so far. But it's also a good way of checking to see if they're hoarding food, right? I think another thing too, one last, oh, two things, I'm so sorry, but two things. That's fine. Is that thinking outside the box, we don't have to brush their teeth in the bathroom. It could be in front of the kitchen sink. If they are sitting in their comfy chair and they're watching TV land and they're happy as a clam, the last thing you want to do is disturb them. So guess what? You bring the toothbrush and toothpaste to them. You you know, put, you know, put the toothpaste on the toothbrush. You have one of those little basins and I'm sure we've all seen, they're all pink. They're always pink. You know, you brush their teeth for them or they will brush their teeth for themselves or a little bit of both. And then you have the water for them and they rinse and spit. And guess what? You're done. Easy peasy. Thinking outside the box of when the mouth is going to be taken care of is, is so beneficial and it can really save you a lot of time, a lot of anguish because I can almost, almost guarantee you that if they're sitting there watching their favorite show, they're going to be more amenable to having someone brush their teeth than staring at themselves, trying to keep themselves up or in the wheelchair where they really don't want to be in and brushing their teeth for them, staring at themselves. So if I could be of any assistance that way, a little hint of help. There you go. Well, commercials are about two minutes. So yeah. That's 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 a good time to say, hey, let's let's try this. And then they yeah. go back to their show and forget yeah. that you harassed forget. them about their teeth. And, yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been fantastic. And I knew you had great stories. I love the story about the gal with the uh, unknown dentures. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. cracks me up. I remembered that from when we talked before. So glad you brought that like right right up right out of the gate that was excellent so Thank give you. us all your contact info it will also be in the show notes so people don't have to try to write it down while they're doing the 500 other things they're doing while listening to this yeah but really quickly sure so my best email address and this is hippo compliant email address so people can put information down and, and talk about loved ones if necessary is office at joyful dentalcare.com joyful with one l so office at joyfuldentalcare.com is the best way to reach me. And if anyone is interested in having me speak for them, my website is joypostcosmdds.com. That's J-O-Y-P-O-S-K-O-Z-I-M-D-D-S.com. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for for spending some time with me. And I'm glad we could rearrange all of our schedules to make this happen today. <laughs> Yay for flexibility. <laughs> you know, if if that's the one thing we learned from caregiving that you just got to roll with it. Amen. Well, that's a good thing. And, you know, it's I've a just good learned. To, yeah. You know what? At the end of the week, everything I needed to get done this week will happen. Just all happen exactly. at different hours. It's cool. So I appreciate it. And... This is coming out at the beginning of the year, so have a happy 2022.
Thank you so much, you too. And keep doing what you're doing. I think what you're doing is fabulous. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.